Do you wish that you could automatically link one table to another because you're always manually doing it inside of your Airtable base? Well, if that's of interest, look no further than this video because I'm gonna be showing you how, with a little bit of formula and automation magic, how you can start automatically linking your tables. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, where we make it our mission to help you save up to 20 hours of your time every week with no code tools. If that's of interest and you wanna learn how you can start reclaiming massive amounts of time in your workday, well, look no further than my free automation training. In this training, I teach you the fundamental building blocks of automation so that anyone can start leveraging the power of automated workflows that are gonna do all of that data moving from one place to another, do it all in the background so that you don't have to spend your time doing it and you can focus on that high level picture. For access to this training, just visit me at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. I will include links below the description of this video. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of this where we are talking about how you can automatically start linking one table to another. So first let's walk through our setup here and I'm gonna take you through the example that I've built and then showcase how you can start leveraging some automatic linking in your tables. So hopping into my screen, what I'm imagining here is that we are running a restaurant, a really small cafe that has five different staff members. And so we have them listed out in our staff table. Now we also in our second table have a calendar and this is where we're looking at dates, but not just dates, it's more like shifts because yes, we have a record here for 515, May 15th, but you'll notice that it's the AM shift, the morning shift. And then we also have a record for 515 for the PM shift. And the requirements for an AM or PM shift are gonna be different. We need more staff for evenings usually in the restaurant industry. And of course, if we were being really precise, we would also need to add additional staff for weekends and holidays and things like that. And then on our third table, this is shifts scheduled. And this is where we're actually gonna get into a junction table. Now, if you haven't used junction tables before, they are a critical component of building excellent databases and proper data architecture inside of Airtable. So do check out our video on junction tables, which I will link to around this video as well. But in our particular example, we are combining our staff here with a specific calendar shift that was from the first and second tables respectively. So here we can see Amy is scheduled for that 5.15 a.m. shift. Barnett is scheduled for the 5.15 p.m. shift. Chad is scheduled for the 5.15 p.m. shift and so on. Now, the reason that we wanna break this out into a junction table is because every unique record that we are creating here, in this case, Chad on 5.15 p.m., well, he's gonna have his own start and end time. Just as Amy, if she's got the opening shift on 5.15 a.m., well, she has her own start and end time for her shift. Same thing with Barnett. He's working the same shift as Chad here, 5.15 evening shift, but their in times and their out times are different. And this is very standard in the restaurant industry, but it doesn't stop there. This kind of detailed nuance happens in all kinds of different industries. And what we wanna see is, well, how long is the duration of each one of these scheduled shifts? So it's easy enough for us to build, in this case, a formula that takes the difference in time between the end and the start time of each individually scheduled person on each one of these shifts. And we can then output this in, in our case, hours, six and a half hour shift, five hour shift, six hour shift, etc. Now where things get complicated is when we say, hey, I wanna know how many hours of total labor have we scheduled for 515? Well, we can look at this and add it up right here. Sure, that's 17 and a half hours, but we don't actually have this rolling up or aggregating inside of our database in a way that is tangible. So in order to get this, you might first think to flip back to your calendar. And if we go back to calendar and we try to use a rollup field, which I've done here, a rollup field, by the way, is looking one layer deep, in this case, looking at our linked relationships from calendar to shift scheduled. And I'm looking at the hour field and I'm trying to sum that up. But because of the fact that my shifts are broken up into AM and PM, well, I don't get a total for the day. So nowhere here do I see that 17.5 hours unless I were to manually add up the number of hours scheduled for that AM shift, add it to the number of hours scheduled for the PM shift. 
but there's an easier way. What if I don't want to do that manually every day? Instead, I can build a fourth table, a daily labor summary. And this is currently a blank table because we're going to walk through together how we can set this up. So going back to our shifts scheduled, what I need to do here is link every single shift scheduled to the actual calendar date so that I can then roll it up. And as I've already shown you, if I'm looking at our calendar table, this particular table is breaking it down by shift, which is more granular detail than I need for this particular summary. So instead, what we can do is link our shift scheduled to our daily labor summary. So let's build that link daily labor summary. And this is going to be my linked relationship, a link to that new table. And I don't need to worry about multiple record linkings because every shift is only going to link to one summary element. So I'll create this field. Now for this particular record, this is going to go to the day of 515. Now we know that because we are able to look up that date from the calendar that we've selected here. So we are able to bring that in. In this case, I can just copy and paste 515 here. And it has now created a record in my daily labor summary table that has the name 515 and automatically linked to it. If I were to do the same thing here, because again, this is also on 515, copy and paste. Again, here, copy and paste. When I go and look at my daily labor summary, what I'm going to see is that I have, number one, created a brand new record here, as I said. And you'll notice that all three of those records that I was just using on the shift scheduled have linked to this summary record. Let me go ahead and remove my other records here, delete those. And now that I have the proper linking, those three records all belonging to May 15th, now I can use a roll up for the day. So I can say daily labor roll up field here. I'm looking again at my linked relationship to shift scheduled. And now I want to go a layer deep to duration. And I want to run a summation here or sum of values. And let's make sure that our output is in hundredths decimal place precision and create the field. And that is exactly where I'm going to first see that 17.5 hours. So now I have the proper linked relationship and everything is summing correctly. And I can see from a high level how many hours I've scheduled for a particular day, but it doesn't stop there. I don't want to do this manually doing this manually copying and pasting from one place to the other is a bit maddening. So this is where an automation can work for us and automatically link any new shift scheduled that we create and link it to the proper summary record. Let's go ahead and build that automation. I'm going to open up my automations here. And the trigger that I like to use for this is to say that if there's ever a change to the field that I want to copy from, and so in this case, I'm copying from that date field. So when I click on add a trigger, I'm going to go for when a record is updated, but I get to be more granular and I can watch specific fields. First, I have to choose my table. So I will select my shifts scheduled table and I will select any view. In this case, it doesn't matter. And in my fields, the specific field that I want to watch here is the calendar date. That is the field that I copied and pasted. So whatever field you're copying for this manually is the one that you want to watch. I'm going to go ahead and choose a record here and you can see all the different records in my shifts scheduled table. Let's go ahead and pick this one here, 516. I'll make that selection. The change that I want to make here or the update is an updated record. So that is going to be my action step. The record I want to update is the same record that actually triggered the automation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And that would be in my shifts scheduled table again. The record ID is the ID that we found in the first step. So I can bring that record ID in here and the field that I want to update. This is the field where I pasted the thing that I had first copied. And so in our case, I am pasting it into my daily labor summary link. Now for an automatic linking every time you're going to make sure that you have a linked field here and this icon here, the three lines with the arrow there, that is a linked field icon. So I'm selecting that linked field and what I want to paste there effectively is the output that existed here in my calendar date. Make sure to grab the actual value of this. I don't want to grab the length, which is only one. I don't want to grab the linked record ID. I need the value of that particular field. Let's go ahead and do that. Run that as configured 
and see what comes back for us. Now that that's run, I wanna hop back in and check to make sure it ran appropriately. But what you see is that actually the way that it interprets the date is different in the automation. So this is where a little formula magic is gonna come into play. Date fields are a little unpredictable and you never really know how Airtable is going to interact with them. So what I really like to do is convert anything to text so that I can be darn good and sure that I'm not working with a funky format. So rather than using this calendar date, let's build yet another field here and I'll call this formula output and then I'll say date here in parentheses. I'll write a quick formula that simply says, I wanna look at the calendar date field. Let's go ahead and bring that in. And if we look at this, we notice that yes, it's recognizing it as a date time. So if instead of using this date time, what I wanna do is actually output text. Well, first things first, I need to tell it that I wanna treat it like text. The best way to do this is to first concatenate that field. When we concatenate something, we're going to treat it as a string, which is going to put it into text format, which I like a lot better. Although you'll notice that still the output doesn't match what I'm looking for. What I want here is month, day, year. So I need to first format that inside of here. So first let's use a date time format and I'm going to apply this to my calendar date field and month, date, year format is this standard lowercase l. And if I bring this in, then we see the right format. And now outside of this, I'm going to write or wrap a concatenate formula so that I can first take the calendar, put it in the format I want, and then treat it as text. Let's go ahead and save that. And now I'm working with text. I can go back to my automation. And instead of copying this lookup field, which in our case is a date, now I'm going to be using a field that looks identical to it, except we know that it's text. So again, popping into my automation here, I'm gonna go into my when record is updated, drop on down, and instead of watching that calendar date, now I want to watch that formula field instead. I called that formula output date. So let's choose a record here. This time I'll choose a 517 record, May 17th. Now I'm gonna update the record, but instead of copying the lookup field and pasting it in the linked field, I'm going to copy my formula, which is a text output, and paste it in my linked field here. So we're gonna remove what we had there previously. And we're gonna drop on down and find the formula output date. This, if we run a test, should produce the outcome we're looking for. If I go ahead and back up now, and I go into my daily labor summary, we see that yes, a record was just created with the right name, 5-17-2022. And the best part about this is we are already starting to see the amount of labor that's being pulled in here for Barnett on this particular day. Now we haven't finished connecting everything to the summary yet. So let's see how this would work in practice. First, we have to make sure to turn our automation on. Go back to your automation. Don't forget to turn it on. Give it a good name as well. I'll skip that for now. But names are gonna really help you stay organized inside of your automation, as well as the fact that you can now create sections that categorize or act as folders to store your automations and keep them organized. But now that our automation is on, we can shut this down, look back to our shifts scheduled, and if we make any change whatsoever to one of these, let's say Diane, we accidentally scheduled her for 516. Well, we didn't mean to do that. We wanted to schedule her for 517 morning shift. So here's the 517 AM shift. I make a link here and what we should expect to see and we do is that this automatically updates to the proper summary. So because we made a change to the shift, the calendar link here, well then that changed the calendar date lookup field. Our formula then is changed. That in turn triggers our automation to take what exists here in this formula output and paste it over here. I can make any change to this. Here's Barnett scheduled for the 17th. If we need to move him to the 16th morning shift instead, we can simply do that. And our automatically linked table right here 
It's going to update in the background without us having to worry about it. This is the true magic of Airtable automations because it allows you to link to tables and get the right summary information so that you're running the most efficient business possible. I know there was a lot in this video and we went fast, so please let me know what questions you have below. I hope you got a ton of value from this. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel so you can get up-to-date information on Airtable and no code, and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.